Hi Descendants, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to uh, give you a special video. The reason why this video is special because the game released exactly one month ago and I have been playing the game since the first day it launched and I have been having a blast. If you're just picking up the first Descendant and you're looking for Ultimate Beginner's Guide, this video is for you. In this video I'm going to be talking about the most important things that you need to pay attention to and this way you will know that you're progressing fast enough in the game and you're not wasting your time very close to hitting my very first 2000 subscribers on my youtube channel and i would really appreciate if you help me out get hit this goal um if you do you're forever in my heart thanks for watching let's go now let's touch on the topic descendants descendants there is a bunch of descendants that you can pick from and there are some very good options there are some average options as well uh, but mostly the descendants all of them have great potential to become very strong in the game so my personal advice to you over here is in the beginning try to go after uh, the descendants that you enjoy visually the most. Uh, there's already tons of guides out there. I personally also release guides. I have a guide for Ultimate Ve uh, Lepic. I have a guide for Ultimate Bunny. In general, I plan on releasing more uh, builds and guides uh, on, a, on a regular basis. So make sure you check out those. Most of the descendants, if built properly, will be able to clear out 99% of the content super easy and super efficient uh, with a little bit of investment. Um, um, done now personally what i do recommend um for you to go after in the very beginning if you're just starting out i really highly recommend going for bunny you will receive bunny for free um throughout progressing through the story build her because she is actually really really good in clearing out mob content meaning that she will be uh, your farmer in the beginning you can uh, speed run through the missions you can clear out very quickly uh, most of the content in the game if not everything and she has been my go-to grinder for materials for gold for kuiper now a few honorable mentions that i can uh, drop in over here Ultimate Lepic is very strong if you build him properly uh, for clearing boss contents. If you want to, uh, to um, you know, melt bosses and stuff like that. Uh, Ultimate Glay is also one of uh, the descendants that is very strong if you build her properly uh, for, um, you know, certain builds. Uh, then we have Bobby, which is also very strong, very good at mobbing. Then we have Ultimate Viesa, currently becoming one of my most favorite descendants she's really a jack of all trades she can she can really go to grind bosses grind for materials she can do so many things because she has so many different viable builds available ajax is just purely a very strong tank if you build him tanky and you won't have any problems in terms of survivability and stuff like this blair is uh, someone that is great melting mobs he is a fire descendant so he um, you know relies on his fire skills He's very good at, uh, you know, certain mission types where you purely just drop lava on the ground and melt mobs over and over again. Reyna is a poison focused descendant. She's also great if you like dot damage, if you like to just spread out poison and stuff like that. She's one of my favorite ones as well. Enzo is also recommended for you to get in your kit because he actually has a passive. You, you open vaults for grinding and opening uh, certain materials in the game. He makes this activity so much more easier because he has a perk that is actually increasing the mini game timer in it and it makes it super easy to to grind this now one advice that i can give you my advice is you can unlock all of them for free in the game you don't have to pay uh, any money to unlock any of the descendants however if you decide to you know save a little bit of time and pay for descendants and unlock for example ultimate version or anything like that i actually have a, cre a nexon creator code you want to support me and my channel you can use my uh, creator code which is going to be in the description below mods is the bread and butter about upgrading system in the game basically this is the thing that makes uh, the system very interesting it is very similar to the modding system in warframe if you played warframe before the cool thing about the mod system what i personally enjoy is that you have so much freedom to play around with the different mods and you can have different builds this makes the game fun interesting and exciting for me 
I really like going and testing out different builds, different mods, uh, min-maxing. There is also a downside about the modding system, and it's how expensive it is to actually progress in the game. You not only have to acquire the mods, but you also need to level them up and upgrade the mods, uh, which costs two currencies uh, kuiper which is this currency over here these are you know the shards that are used for you to upgrade your modules and gold is also one of the currency that is used for upgrading these mods gold in the beginning very very beginning of the game until you really don't hit end game and start really upgrading those mods really heavily it's not gonna be a bottleneck for you in fact you'll probably even get to probably 10 million gold in the beginning without thinking all right when do i actually start using gold until the part when you start getting transcendent mods and you or you get purple and, and yellow mods that are actually really expensive to upgrade just for reference the transcendent mod over here that i have for my ultimate lepic to get this one to the maximum level costs 5.1 million gold so be aware that you know more rare mods will be more pricey for you to upgrade i highly recommend you before you start upgrading anything really look at some guides online and see what are people building and make your conclusions based on this you don't have to copy the guide but see what are people doing and what are the mods that people go after first because certain mods that really have different impact on certain builds. A good thing about the modding system is that there are certain mods that you will see almost everywhere or you will see them overlap in different builds. One example is, for example, Frontlines. If you are playing a Descendant that is really reliant on his skills, not so much on his weapons, you would like to put this mod into your build because it gives you skill critical hit damage and skill critical hit rate, for example, which is significantly going to boost your damage um, when you're using your skills. Another example is skill concentration, also a very popular one. Skill extension, this is increasing the duration of your skill. So some mods are really um, seen in many different builds. And the good thing is, the moment you upgrade this mod once, you don't have to upgrade this mod anymore. Now, there are some rare mods, for example, like MP Collector, or at least it felt rare for me in the beginning while I was grinding for it. After I got my first one, then it, they stopped it. They started raining almost every day. I get an MP Collector, which is, you know, funny because me personally, I invested 10 hours specifically to get this mod, then it started, you know, showing up every second day, um, which is funny. HP Collector is also a very important mod over here. I actually do have a best mods video on my YouTube channel that you can check out. There I talk about survivability, mobility, damage, and stuff like that. Make sure you check out this video. Let's talk about the weapons. There is a few uh, types of weapons. There is uh, obviously blue weapons in the beginning that you will get. Those are straight garbage, just... Um, use them until you get like purple weapons. Once you get purple weapons, you start using these. Thunder Cage is, for example, one of the weapons that is being handed over to you for free. And you'll actually, throughout completing the story, you will get two of these, uh, which is really currently really recommended for you to focus on because Thunder Cage is one of the best weapons uh, currently in the game, or at least it's, you know, preferred to have in your kit now in the beginning you won't get any level 100 weapons obviously until you finish the storyline and you complete normal mode once you unlock hard mode in hard mode you will be able to get level 100 weapons and this is where the real fun starts until you hit level 100 and you don't unlock hard mode i highly recommend you don't really invest that many resources into your weapon now let's talk about the weapon types there is actually four weapon types based on the ammo there is general rounds with the white ammo there is uh, impact rounds which is the green ammo there is purple rounds which is high power rounds and there is special rounds which is actually uh, orange type of weapons orange ones like these usually those are sniper rifles based on the rounds based on the play style you can go for different weapons some people really like playing with snipers go for it uh, upgrade your snipers and stuff like that now let's talk about the general thing about weapons. Now if we look at this weapon specifically, this is, um, you know, almost a perfect roll weapon. And when I say a perfect roll, what does that mean? If you see below, uh, over here, it says firearm attack 11.9%, firearm critical hit rate, firearm critical hit damage, and weak point damage. Those are substats 
that are rolled on the weapon. For example, this one has bonus firearm to order of truth, electric attack, firearm attack, weak point damage. Not a perfect roll. Ideally, I would like to re-roll off the bonus firearm attack to versus order of truth. I don't need this. Now, in order for you to re-roll weapons, you need to go to a weapon readjustment and you need to click on the weapon itself. Locking in certain stats that you have perfectly rolled and about and when I say perfectly rolled, um, the readjustable options and stats that you can get. And on the left side, you see the minimum that can be rolled. And if this minimum rolls, for example, if firearm critical hit rolls, 9.9% uh, it will appear here in a blue color if it's somewhere in the middle between the min and max roll let's say 10% for here it will be in purple and when it's yellow that means that it's almost perfect basically you almost got the highest roll possible in this game usually in most weapons in most weapons what you're looking for is to have a yellow roll for firearm attack this increases the firearm dps base dps that uh, that is, um, you know, in the weapon itself. And usually all the additional DPS modifiers like uh, um, weapon crit damage and, and uh, other damage modifiers that are, you know, happening in a weapon, they usually uh, are based off the firearm total attack. So this is why firearm total attack is usually really recommended for you to have as a golden role uh, and always try to weak, uh, to go for it. Another very honorable mention, for example, is weak point damage. Weak point damage is when you hit weak points on, uh, for example, mobs or bosses. Bosses even have them as shoulder plates, knee plates, and stuff like that, that you can destroy. Those are weak points. Those are destructible parts. On the bosses, you kill those. This is considered a weak point. This means that you will do additional ma damage on those weak points. But that's why weak point damage is actually so strong. Now, those two other stats, I ideally want to re-roll. I actually don't want to keep the electric attack roll, although it's almost perfect. And now, as you can see, I locked in those two rolls and it will cost me five readjustment materials. Um, and now when I re-roll it, you will see that I got, you know, a, a blue roll and a purple roll. Those are exactly not rolls that I'm looking for. So I'm going to re-roll again. We got fire attack, rounds per magazine. Um, and no, not what I'm looking for, right? Nope. At this point, I'm even, I run out of gold. <laughs> so yeah, this is also like, um, you know, pretty expensive to reroll. Just, um, you know, the moment you start rolling and rolling more, um, this will become more expensive. Now let's talk about the things that you, uh, that make, that make you actually way stronger. Now, you need to consider one thing if we're talking about ultimate weapons and in general weapons in general. The thing that makes a weapon very strong is not only the substats, but it's actually the mods that you're using in, in these weapons. The, so, uh, you know, important mods to look for early in the game. You can use something like Rifting Reinforcement. This is going to increase your firearm attack by 32%. As soon as as soon as you get action reaction you can also drop this in it's another 61 percent if you put those two mods on top of each other you can increase your firearm attack by 93 percent in total which is which is a very huge boost in your damage early on in the game from there on it depends on what do you want to build <clears throat> do you are you building a pistol are you building a sniper are you building a machine gun a submachine gun uh, those different types of weapons have different uh, play styles. Uh, but in most cases, again, people are trying to tend more towards weak point damage, uh, usually and critical hit damage, critical hit rate. Fire rate is really one of the important ones as well. Um, in here, this is a purple mod, but you can actually go for the regular fire rate up, which is going to increase your fire rate for 25%. It's a cheap mod. You can go for it, upgrade it, put it into your weapon early on. And this is going to increase, um, you know, how quickly your weapon fires. This also basically increases the amount of damage that you're putting out per minute, per second. Rifting reinforcements, action reaction, fire rate. Those are three mods that I can recommend you already early on in the game in your weapons. Even if you're very early in the game, if you don't have that much materials, just pick 
uh, rifting reinforcements upgrade this a little bit as much as you can if you tend to see that you're struggling to clear out content because you don't have that much damage and stuff like this before we move on i just want to highlight one thing now if you notice over here on top of uh, these modules there are this different signs and those are the socket types um, and each module different modules have different socket types so basically if you've played warframe before those are the polarities um and no here it's just socket types based on you know just letters right so i call them letters we have c a m x and r um so those letters over here now you wonder okay why do i have this and it says eight uh, and it's in green this is because i actually used something called a crystallization catalyst and this crystallization catalyst basically lets you assign one um you know polarity to a certain slot now keep in mind that so far in the game the developers haven't added us an option for us to re-roll the assigned module uh the assigned polarity um which means that the moment you lock on these you're not able to re-roll this unless you craft another weapon like that to replace it right um, the other bottleneck about this weapon is that it's actually a little bit difficult or time consuming to grind because specifically crystallization catalyst blueprints take a little bit of time to grind. I have guides on my on my YouTube channel how to grind this, how where you can find the best spots and stuff like this. And this is a hot topic always because this is one of the most used materials, most used items to upgrade both your descendants and your weapons. Imagine you need one, two, three, four, five, and then another five for your weapons. If you want to max it out, that's 10 already per weapon. Then you also have descendants. On your descendants, you can exactly use those same ones uh, to unlock the full potential of the descendant. So those are one of the most important items to craft. And um, if you want to craft crystallization catalyst blueprints, keep in mind that it takes time for you to craft them. So as soon as you the sooner you start grinding for crystallization catalysts in the game the sooner you will start progressing um in the game uh, and i highly recommend you the moment you unlock hard mode go and start grinding for this crystallization catalyst go for the crystallization catalyst grind as soon as possible this is going to increase your uh capacity um costs for your modules which means that you know less costs means that you can use upgraded modules and you have more room to put in more so this is really really important for you to go after as soon as possible the other item that is really important as well is called uh energy activator which is max capacity up let me actually show you um how it looks like if i if you don't use one so if you don't use an uh, energy activator you will be uh, limited to 50 capacity this stands both for your uh, descendants and also for your weapons now if i get if i decide to use one energy activator on this weapon it's going to increase the maximum capacity from 50 to 80 which is huge now keep in mind that this is used only once per descendant only once per weapon you don't have to use more but again similar to um the uh, crystallization catalyst grind it is a bottleneck to get the bottle of the blueprints so check out the guide below in my description for uh, crafting energy activators um, this is going to save you a little bit of time and you start grinding for these as soon as possible once you get to um, you know end game and hard mode uh, unlocked so that you can do certain activities now this is going to increase the max capacity obviously of the weapon which is really important if you decide to main for example thunder cage uh, definitely use one of these early on in the game one general advice that i can give you over here in terms of where should you invest your energy activators first i have a logical approach to this right it, let's say i'm going to play bunny bunny is my descendant go to descendant i like her she's quick she can clear out uh, mobs very quickly and I, uh, she does ton of damage. Well, she really depend, Bunny really depends on her skills and on her, you know, kit in general. 
So the weapon for Bunny is not that important. I'm saying not that important because she relies more on her skills. So in this case, what you would like to do, for example, let me just take um, uh, my regular Bunny over here. Um, and if I want to, if I want to go with my regular Bunny over here, she only has 50 capacity, right? If I want to upgrade this to 80, this will uh, this this will be a huge boost uh, for that, right? The reason why it says 70 over here is because I don't actually have um, um, module equipped here. Uh, sub module, sub modules increase your capacity if maxed out by another 10. So let's say I have this. Now I have instead of 50, I have 60. And if I put an energy activator, let me save this. If I now if I activate an energy activator, her capacity goes to 80. So if you play a descendant that is really reliant on her skill and on her build and you want to make her stronger, activate the energy activator first on the descendant and then activate one on your weapon. However, what I want to give you as a tip is if you are going to use an ultimate weapon like Thunder Cage, for example, uh, which is really strong still, um, you can use Thunder K, the energy activator on your main weapon. The reason why I'm recommending you this early on in the game, because let's say you decide that you have been playing enough Bunny and you want to switch out and let's say you've unlocked uh, the ultimate version of Bunny or you unlock Bobby, let's say, right? After you unlock another descendant, you carry over your weapon. When you carry over your weapon, you don't have to reinvest energy activators in it. So the reason why I recommend early on decide which weapon are you going to main. Thunder Cage, for example, because it's given out to you free and it's really strong uh, if you build it properly. I would, I would recommend you invest in Thunder Cage as a weapon early on in the game. It will help you out, clear out uh, tons of content very easy and very um, early in the game. Let's talk about reactors. Reactors is actually an important topic, but it's more important once you unlock hard mode. Hard mode is when uh, you clear out the story and um, in hard mode, the reason why I'm saying you it is more important there because there you can grind for specific reactors specifically for the playstyle and for the descendant and for the weapon that you have. When I say weapon uh, over here, if you pay attention, uh, below the skill power numbers, we have optimization conditions. Optimization conditions, it says Thunder Cage Mounting. Thunder Cage Mounting means that if I have my Thunder Cage, which I have right now as my main weapon, if I have it on, has to be on, You, even if I pull out my handgun, let me show you, if I just switch to my handgun, right now, the Thunder Cage Mounting is not working. So, if you have it on, your skill power is boosted to 160 percent it is huge that's why in endgame when you're looking for reactors you want to look for reactors that are gonna be connected to your main weapon ultimate weapon that you're using the other thing that you need to pay attention to uh, i'll talk about in a second how you can actually find these um specifically uh, and how to grind for these but skill power boost ratio over here, non-attribute skill power boost ratio. This is the first one is always going to be the same one as the reactor type. So Bobby is a non-attribute skill uh, based uh, descendant. That's why the first one is like this. And the second one is boosting either fusion, singular, dimensional or tech. Those are, uh, if you're wondering what, you what this is, let's say over here, if you if I mouse over the skills of Balbi, you will see that, for example, her ult is a fusion skill. Her third ability is a dimension skill. Her second ability is a dimension skill. Her first ability is a fusion skill. So if you want to ba build her based on her ult and on her first ability, you would like to look for a reactor that has a fusion boost. If I want to build her based on the second and third ability, I want to have something that is boosting dimension. Now, in my case, in my reactor, I don't have, I have fusion, right? Fusion is actually not the, the, the thing that I'm looking for because I rarely use the ult, almost never with this specific build. 
but first ability, all right, the first ability we might get a little bit of a power boost um, because of the reactor. So now the next thing that I want to touch on the reactor is, is the yellow number and the blue number, skill critical hit rate and skill critical effect range. Now those are the substats. Now in order for you to get a perfect roll, you want to have now these, when, when the reactors drop, and once you unlock hard mode, you will see that you will get a ton of reactors, uh, but every reactor has a different, um, you know, substat. Just for example, I'm showing you another non-attribute non, uh, skill one. This one has dimensional skill power boost ratio, what my build is looking for, but the substats are actually not exactly what I want. It has a perfect role for dimension skill power boost ratio. So my dimensional skills are boosted twice in this reactor itself. But unfortunately, the, the, the first role is an additional skill attack when attacking Legio of Darkness. Those are the worst type of, sub, um, uh, you know, uh, roles because those are only specific to a certain enemy. The only one time that you might want to keep something like this if it's in case let's say boosting damage against colossus like this one additional skill attack when attacking colossus um and this means that uh, against attacking bosses and you only want to keep this if this is a reactor that you're going to be using only for fighting bosses for example right in any other case um all the additional skill attacks against certain types of mobs is useless because you will be rolling and changing spots every time and it's not going to be efficient. Now the stats that you ideally want to look for in most builds, in most case scenarios, are things like skill critical hit damage. Now if this is a chill reactor like this one, chill skill power boost ratio is also huge. This is going to increase additionally the damage that you get um, for your chill attacks. Over here for the non-dimensional, uh, I also have uh, this one, for example, with skill duration up and skill cooldown with good rolls. This one, for example, is tech skill power boost ratio and skill duration. Keep in mind that you need to look at the optimization conditions and the weapons. This one particularly is for Nazishua's Devotion, which is my second weapon. If I'm playing Lepic, which is my fire descendant, um, I want to use Nazishua's weapon. This is going to boost my fire skills because... Now, let's talk about how you can grind for these reactors. If you open up your map, the moment you unlock hard mode, this is not available in normal mode. The moment you unlock hard mode, you can actually click F if you're a mouse on keyboard or R3 uh, or your right analog stick on your uh, controller uh, to open up this menu. Now, two things you need to focus on over here when you're looking for the specific type of reactor that you're looking for. Let's say I'm looking for general rounds and <clears throat> Thunder Cage is a gen general round reactor. Now, here I now filtered only general rounds and here are all the different types of zones that drop this type of reactor. Now, we said that <clears throat> I'm looking for... Uh, for this example, I'm looking for non-attribute general rounds dimension. Now, if I go and grind here in the Muscat Mus Swamp, I will get a per I might get a perfect reactor that will have Thunder Cage mounting and that will also boost my dimensional skills for Valby. You get the point? You're looking for the uh, the specific type of boost that you're gonna get again based on the skills that you want to boost whether it is dimension or it is fusion and you're looking for the weapon mounting and from there on if i go there and i grind i will continue i will i will keep on getting the exact types of uh reactors but then you know it's a matter of a grind because you are going to be looking for perfect rolls you will you want you will be getting tundra cage uh, mountings uh, but the rolls will be blue, the rolls will be super random, you'll get one which is skill duration, then you'll get additional damage against uh, a certain type of mobs. You're looking for the perfect roll, which unfortunately is a grind, but this is the shooter looter, this is how the game works. Components is something that is going to boost your survivability um, in your game. Whether it is giving you max, uh, some kind of stats like HP, defense, shield, 
uh, those are the main stats that you will be getting in those components the stats that you should be looking for is hp defense and then shield unless you're looking for a shield based character which are very rare almost no one builds shield because uh, it is currently a little bit weak but in the future of the game they might change this so don't take this word for granted the more hp you have the better now as you can see um later in the game once you unlock hard mode and once you start killing the bosses on hard mode uh, you will get different types of sets available for example if you kill dead bride she will drop this type of component which is a piece of four set and when you have uh, two or four components from the set you will get additional bonuses this is another example this is a venom essence set this is going to boost for example toxic skills and stuff like this this is annihilation which will boost skill duration um, a two set piece by the way from this set would be a great boost for someone that is using their skills constantly and want to keep an, them active longer you just need two pieces of these then we have slayer for example that is going to boost your skill power if you have four pieces over here equipped go for max hp double rows is ideally uh, the best case scenario for your uh, sensor over here when you're playing a descendant that is actually very mana dependent uh, look for a substat roll for max mp this is going to help you out to keep your skills a little bit longer spam your skills a little bit longer then you have um, sometimes you also look for um, certain mods that have substats that boost uh, drop rates for so certain things here i do have a purple um, you know perfect component purple component it's very old i have had this from the first week i have been playing the game but it has perfect modifiers for uh, Kuiper and module drop rates. And when I'm grinding for materials and when I'm grinding for Kuiper, I always throw that in. I sacrifice a little bit uh, survivability, but I get that juicy Kuiper drop rate modifier. Same thing stands for over here. I have this one, which gives me defense and a golden roll for gold drop rate modifiers. So if I want to grind gold, which I need to do right now because I ended up uh, having no gold at all anymore. Um, I will drop this modifier in and I will go and grind for gold. Go for defensive stats first to have more survivability in those components and then uh, get yourself a few ones that you like and that you would like to keep uh, down the road. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. There are so many um, different components that you can go for um, and grind for um, and so on. Just go for good stats and keep the ones uh, that are golden rolls for you. All right, there is one other tip that I can give you and that is actually utilize the access info over here. The access info is your Wikipedia of the game. If you're looking on, for example, how can I unlock um, Blue Beetle as a scout rifle, right? I want to unlock this weapon. I am I already have two. I got two blueprints by uh, defeating the bosses. I want to finish crafting this uh, weapon. Oh, Look at this. I already have the blueprint for crafting this one. I just am I'm missing this type of material. Where do I get this material? You just press your mouse over, you press F and it shows you where I can actually get this type of material by killing the mission monsters um, and specifically in a hard mission in Agn Desert. And it's actually it's an outpost. So if I go and grind this outpost, if I kill the yellow bar uh, elite over there, he has a chance to drop me this specific material and it's only 25 that means that probably i need to kill this mission only two or three times which will take me five minutes and i will already have this material that means that i can actually go and already craft this part of the blueprint exact same way you go for the other ones here i'm missing this specific material the blueprint itself which means all right let me go and actually check out where and how can i get it what is important it's energy activators and crystallization catalyst specifically crystallization catalyst is the most important one you will need a lot of these so get grinding as soon as possible so, there you have it folks i know this video has been a little bit longer than expected i uh, got carried away a little bit and tried to get a little bit into details there's obviously so many more things that we can talk about uh, more in details and stuff like this um i would love to talk about different grinding spots by the way this spot what i'm showing you here is called the bobby run yeah where you can actually grind pretty easily experience and gold in the game it got nerfed with the recent patch but it's still one of the top spots if you want to um 
get some quick gold uh, going and some experience if necessary as well as a little bit of kuiper um, go check it out if you're looking for an interesting spot to grind i hope this video was useful uh, uh, let me know in the comments below if you learned something new um, and i would uh, really appreciate you if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet so i'll see you in the next video good luck with your drops